Hi, Terry Bradshaw here from the UVM Fruit Program. I want to talk a little bit about this week's uh, integrated pest management we need to be thinking about. It is uh, April 24th, 2024. Out in the orchards uh, in Champlain Valley, we're seeing uh, fruit buds at half inch green, late half inch green, early tight cluster bud stage. Um, that means that we're entering into an advanced period for apple scab management. We hung uh, tarnished plant bug traps last week in our orchard, uh, found no uh, captures this week, which is not unusual. It's been fairly cool. Trees have been kind of parked at where they're at. The real thing I want to talk about is the uh, potential for apple scab and the need to be managing for that disease. So I'm going to walk through the decision making process and kind of how we how we look at this uh, using the NEWA system. So let me hide myself up in the corner. Uh, this URL, niwa.cornell.edu, is uh, the place to go to access this uh, expert system that will integrate weather stations that are located all throughout the east and even a few out in the west. Um, these different stations are located either on uh, participating orchard sites or in airports. If anyone would like a station, please reach out to me. Uh, and uh, I can help you access the station. Looking at our station in South Burlington, uh, this is where the UVM Horticulture Research and Education Center is. Our orchard uh, is, is located there. Um, we can see a few different pieces. So I just highlighted on, on that particular station, I can see the immediate um, weather conditions that are happening right now up there. I can see a quick forecast, not very detailed, but but something that gives me a sense for what's coming. Um, this forecast is actually important. The more detailed forecast is actually input into the models, and those models will um, generate the um, output that will tell us whether or not we need to be considered about uh, con considering applying any kind of uh, pest management practices. Down here in all crop tools or in IPM and crop tools. I'll go to all tools and I'll go to apple scab. That's the main thing we're concerned about right now. Like I said, today is April 24th, South Burlington. I'll click on a couple things here. I want to look at the ascospore maturity uh, and I want to look at the infection events down here. So I can look at this. I, I can verify that the green tip date was indeed um, on April 10th. Uh, the, let me make this a little bit bigger. The NEWA will guesstimate or will estimate based upon degree days where your uh, green tip date is. This is actually pretty important because the, the, the model we're about to walk through starts at the green tip date, uh, which is the point at which the, um, the buds have just opened enough that you can see green tissue, fruit buds, uh, on apples, uh, particularly from the side of the bud. And this is true, ours did emerge on April 10th. Sometimes the model and, and the orchard are a little bit off from, from one another. We can see ascospore maturity. Like I say, today is April 24th, it's predicting about 12% maturity of spores and about a 4% release of spores today. Uh, we're also predicting, or at least estimating, that 8% of the total amount of ascospores have emerged or been released uh, from the leaf litter. The overwintering leaf litter that carries last year's apple scab inoculum will, um, is what, is what uh, provides the uh, inoculum for this year's infection. So, um, you know, with this 4%, this if, if you had a lot of scab last year, that can be a, a, an awful lot of scab. Now, these are predictions. This is based upon a, a degree day model. So you can see April 10th, um, we're looking at uh, green tip plotted out here, and then we start to accumulate degree days within the uh, model, and the model does this for us, but creates, creates this, this range of this confidence interval um, where we, we can guesstimate that somewhere between when we get to today, um, 0 to 38% of spores are mature, but we're, we're basing this on about 12%. That tells me you know, we're entering in a period where we're going to have a rapid expansion of the of the amount of spores that are mature, and mature spores will release, potentially infect, and cause apple scab in, uh, infections. So we want to apply protective fungicides before uh, the app before a, a particular wetting period occurs that causes the release of these spores 
And then that wetting period also leads to the infection of those spores. Those are two different uh, uh, phenomena that happen. If we look down through here, according to NEWA, if we look at today, so it's looking at, it's predicting the weather for today. So, um, you know, it's only, you know, just afternoon. This is predicting the weather for um, today and actually out for the next several minute, uh, uh, days. And we can see it's predicting almost two tenths of an inch of rain, 16 hours of leaf wetness, and an average temperature during that leaf wetness of 44 degrees. This is important because back in the 1940s and, and since then, um, we have worked on a, uh, a table called the Mills table that will uh, predict or allows us to um, compare, get this open over here, compare the time that it takes for the time between the, uh, that, that leaves stay wet, the number of hours the leaves stay wet, uh, and the average temperature during the time they were wet to predict whether or not infection occurred. So on this Mills table, uh, it is predicting that at our 44 degrees that we are, that we expect we're going to have, we need somewhere between 15 and 18 hours of leaf wetness, and we might see scab lesions in in about two and a half weeks. Um, this is done under some some. Uh, this table was developed, uh, you know, years ago and has been refined over the years. But here's something that's important. The output of this would say, yes, you have an infection, or no, you don't have an infection, when really biology is a little bit more nuanced. When we look at this, we see we're right on the cusp. We had 16 hours of leaf wetness that we're predicting. Um, we have 44 uh, degrees Fahrenheit during that period. And according to that table, uh, and NEWA's application of it, we don't have a wetting period, but we're right on the edge, and we're approaching a point where an eighth of all the spores from last year um, are potentially infective. And last year was a very wet year in many orchards, and we expect that there's a fair amount of apple scab out there. So I would not just take that at face value and say, okay, I don't need a spray for this block. This NEWA says no, uh, I'm not going to spray. Um, I would want to make sure that I have some kind of fungicide prep coverage, even if only a portion of the spores that are released are infective. Um, this is a point where we have a lot of green tissue out there. We have uh, a substantial amount of um, spores on the ground, and we want to protect against that. We've also got another predicted uh, weather period coming up that, that NEWA is predicting a scab infection period. So if we apply something, you know, right around now, we'll have room for, we'll, we'll have some extra protective coverage uh, moving forward. So once I've decided I need to do something about covering in this range, I'll check the weather. So you can do a quick kind of high level weather, um, looking at the National Weather Service. Um, and I'll uh, scroll in on this and I'll just pick right around South Burlington. You know, this gives me an idea where the column for showers now and some potentially decreasing clouds. I look for the temperatures. I see that we're in the 20s. I want to apply, apply oil sometime, but uh, you don't want to apply oil if it's, you know, below freezing. And we're certainly a little, little below freezing there, so I'm a little bit concerned. Um, so I won't, if I do spray, I won't put any oil on. Um, also, if I spray, or I should say when I spray, I'll make sure to put in something. It won't be until at least tomorrow. I want to put in something that has um, what we call kickback activity or post-infection activity to cover for this wetting period that NEWA said wasn't an infection, but still may have been an infection. And also will carry me, uh, have some material that will carry me through the weekend uh, when we are predicting another wetting period. So, you know, you can see some pretty, pretty big stuff in here. You know, it's going to be windy overnight, um, you know, but it's kind of, you can't really plan your, your, your spray days around this kind of data. So I like to go to some other sites. Uh, this is one that I use called Weatherbug, um, and there's a number of different uh, ways you can use it. I have it set up here. It's set up for, for Burlington right now. Um, I can move my little picture here. I can go to South Burlington. I don't know that it matters that much. It's not that the data is um, you know, that much different between the two. And again, you can see some detailed weather uh, data for what's happening right now on the ground. But what I like about this is this hourly data function. 
And it turns out one of the things I look for is a, um, you know, a low wind period to, to do my spraying. And uh, it turns out that wind is actually relatively easy to predict with fairly high confidence for the next two, maybe even three days. Um, and so I'm constantly looking at this throughout the pest management season to find my windows so that I can apply and apply the most responsibly when uh, I won't have, uh, you know, the wind causing my materials to drift around. So here we are Wednesday. We can see that by about four o'clock or so, the rain uh, chance of rain drops right off. Um, and let me shrink this down again. I can move ahead. Now we're getting to you know getting cold overnight still got a fair amount of wind north nine miles an hour but by tomorrow morning um we're looking at uh, you know by tomorrow morning we're seeing 5 a.m north wind of six miles an hour um, i consider anything below 10 as sprayable and actually you know two to six is is kind of ideal I like to spray when there's when there's a slight north wind because we have a residential neighborhood to the north of the of the orchard and so this helps me to to mitigate any drift that might head into their area and actually goes uh the drift would would uh carry into a um a wooded you know kind of buffer that we have on the farm and so this is actually almost ideal spray conditions um except for this this uh 28 29 degrees in the morning that's potentially going to lead us to seeing some um, freezing up of the sprayer. So we may need to uh, reconsider and think about um, spraying on Friday. I could also look at, um, you know, go the next 12 hours. My confidence starts to wane a little bit when we get too far out. Um, you know, we're heading out now into a couple days in. Um, there we go. By Friday, 6 a.m., I'm looking at a low wind, southeast wind, so at least it's carrying it um, kind of a, as far as the orchards go. It's carrying it actually over towards another tree buffer. It's better than a southwest wind. Um, we're above freezing and um, relatively low wind. So it looks like right now I'll try to target for Friday morning. So that's the uh, some of the decisions I'll be that I'm making for our own orchard this week. Um, what we decide to, to put into the tank is, is the next decision. Um, we always like to follow the New England Tree Fruit Management Guide, and that's at uh, netreefruit.org. And, um, you know, select our materials based upon uh, the conditions that we're looking for. Um, so we want a protectant fungicide out there right now. We'll go to apples. We'll go to the spray table and uh, we call ourselves a tight cluster you can see a whole host of materials that are in here you don't use all of them um, but i like to apply two at this point of the, of the year i like to apply both the protectant so something that's in this m3 um, or maybe m4 category m3 being the manka zebs um, i'll usually put on a manka zeb early season because you don't like to apply it at uh, after bloom um, and so this saves me some captan that i can use after bloom and then I'll put in something that will have some uh, kickback activity. Um, and I'm probably looking at Vanguard because this is another material that doesn't like to be used. Um, you know, once it gets warm, you know, try not to use it above 70 degrees. So right now we're in a kind of a cool spot. So I'll, um, you know, I'll combine those two. This will give me a little bit of, of retroactive, you know, kickback uh, protection. And the Make Zeb will carry, out, carry on um, and give me forward protection. That's it for today. Um, hope everyone does well out there in the orchard, and um, we'll see you next week. Thanks.